For this part of the uh, digital painting unit, we're going to do um, an assignment basically that basically color cops is what we're after. And what we're trying to do is just look at some of our, our inspiration and study the color that they use. And you should pick stuff from your inspiration boards. Um, and paintings that you like that do not have colors that you normally would default to. Um, what I want you to practice is getting like a simple brush. So, you know, this brush is fairly simple. It's got some texture. Use the marquee tool, just use one layer. Keep it very simple. Um, and right next to each of these images that you paste on a uh, paste on a canvas, I'm going to do a little mini color study. And I want you to do that without dabbing the actual image for color. Um, so here we can probably pick a blue, start with the sky in the background. It's like fairly light and it comes all the way down to about here. And we can just brush out this whole area. We can use large brushes cover big areas and then we can come back in, right? Sometimes I find it useful to work back to front. Now I may have to desaturate and lighten that to get something more accurate to what's there. And I may need darker areas up here. And then I may need to switch to a yellow or yellow orange for the um, light values here in the sort of in the center in the clouds and up here and there's a little over here and a little right here and I can desaturate and darken that for areas like that and down here as well I'm going to paint the um, the horizon over that, so I don't need to worry as much about where to end it. Like I can bring these colors all the way down if I need to. And I could also put a footnote in my head that um, I may need to come back to this orange, so I can. Um, use that for the ground and any light on the ground. Because if you have a color that gets used kind of up in the sky um, and it's the kind of the color of light, then you're going to wind up potentially using that um, on the ground as well. So I'm not trying to copy this painting exactly. I'm just trying to get a sense of like what colors they used for it and just kind of play around with some of the color variations um, and get some of the overall colors going. I don't want it to be super accurate, you know, because if I start getting really accurate with it, then I'm just kind of copying. And that's not really what I'm after, you know, I don't want to sit here copying, copying this painting all day. I just want to take 10 minutes and analyze some color. Um, I know these trees are green, so I need to pick a green. So I come up into the green range. Um, it seems like a warm green sort of towards the yellow maybe and dark you know below halfway point pretty saturated actually maybe like there um, so I can try that out see what that looks like might be good the other thing that I'm doing is I'm working um, uh, back to front so if I need to make any changes it's pretty easy
See, that's not even like as dark as it is. Some of those areas are really dark. And this tree comes up here. Sort of like that. There's a little flicker of orange in there too. So I could come back to this orange that I used for the sky and find sort of the orange that they may have used for this little house here. There's a, like a little fleck. So I can throw that in there as just a little color note. And then they this um, looks like a yellow hay field almost. So I should probably come up to like a yellow orange. It's fairly bright, not particularly saturated. I can look at this little square of the swatch that it's giving me and come in and say, well, that's not saturated enough. That's hitting the right bit there. And this is basically a triangle right here that I've got. And then I have dark versions and desaturated versions of these that are coming in back here and here. Um, that's probably not saturated enough because there's some color in there, right? We can imagine that if we were seeing this painting in person that there would be more colors in this. And here in the middle it's pretty light and not quite white, but pretty close. Then there's some oranges down here that are pretty dark and saturated, like here and here. And then there's some of those greens again. These are dark and it's pretty hard to tell like what even what color this even is so we can just put darks down here right and then this is probably orange but dark and desaturated here um, it almost looks violet you know So our zoom out test is, then we zoom out and see if we kind of got a little bit of the color range there. And yeah, it's a little different, but the idea is there, right? We could modify it and, you know, like take this and say, well, we can make it a little more orange, a little more saturated. And it might look more accurate. And we could play around with it for a while like that. But it's also pretty good where it is, you know. Um, it is not bad for a eight minute color comp. So this one, um, that one I think was Jacob Van Roosdeel. Little Dutch painter. This one's from Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. And I don't remember who did it. Um, but I love this because it's so simple. Um, it really looks like something you would see in, you know, any city USA. It's a bunch of rectangles just kind of stacked with a car to kind of break things up. So our main color in the bottom, it all has this um, orangey cast to it and it's pretty desaturated. We could try to get an orange that looks greenish by leaving it on the orange and desaturating it and darkening it. That gets us to about the right value, but it's not the right color. We might actually need a green. And I think it's green because there's just a, like a greenish tinge to the sky. So we could probably like choose a, cooled down 
green sky for this corner up here. Um, a little more blue, a little lighter and more saturated. Then we've got what's this, a yellow to yellow orange. Like we don't want it to be green yellow. We want it to be more yellow orange yellow. So around middle high high middle value, middle saturation. So let's try this. We'll leave a little strip for the sidewalk. Um, I mean, that's definitely off. We can probably swing more orange, more saturation. Value's about right. See, the thing is, I find it hard to do, get the right color until I have something down. So I kind of put something close that's a guess down and then kind of work my way into it. That's much closer without dabbing down on it. And then it's um, a little lighter and less saturated, but not by much for this um, walkway down here. That was probably too much of a jump. Darken it. There's a little mini dark strip down there that we could get like that. That could help. And then I think we dab redab this green again and then find like a darker version for this area right here to get a little bit of what's going on here. It's a little lighter right here. There's like a little highlight there. We're not going for perfect accuracy, you know? Um, then we have a funky, like, kind of saturated green back here for this tall building. Um, at least on the one side. Then the other side, actually, it looks pretty orange. Again, but dark and not very saturated. So we could do something like that for that building. Then we have a bright orange, more of a true orange. Somewhere in the middle, there's a little strip right here that kind of peeks up like that. And then I think we have back to this green slash blue green, like dark, relatively desaturated under here for this little box. And again, this area, this looks like violet to me. But it could be just color theory messing with my head, you know? Um, so let's try a violet. Could be more saturated than that. Also could be darker in places. Even more saturated maybe. It's hard to say with it, with looking at it this small too, you know? Um, let's see, there's also another green back here in the background. Dark to medium, very low saturation that gets us right here. And then I think there's some like red or reddish, red orange ish stuff going on in the windows. That's pretty dark. Like right here.
And then I'm going to eliminate some of that detail and probably bring some of this violet up to the windows. I'm not going to worry about too much detail. And then I think some of the car would have a violet on it, on the bottom half of the car, and maybe on the wheels. And then I think we'd get some of this green, so we could pick that green again, bring it down in value about there. And I think there'd be some green on the top of the car. And then some bluish green for here. I mean, that gets it, I think. Oh, and we'd also want our um, yellow orange of the uh, roadway strip. pretty saturated. I think that's a key compositional element and I wouldn't want to leave it out. We could push the green in that, I think. Saturate it more, just move it over. It's probably too much of a move. Again, it's not exact, but it's pretty close. It gets us in the ballpark. Um, this one down here is by Craig Mullins. And this one's basically what you would call an analogous color scheme. So we would be working with yellow, red, orange, and red primarily, and shifting around there. So I think what we want to do is find this darkish red for the bottom. Um, make it fairly big and just we could first look at the value, right? And then we can look at maybe some orange and red orange up here fairly saturated, try to get an overall. Then begin looking for yellows that are light and bright up here. might work for the columns okay and might begin to work well in here there's like some surprisingly saturated things in here that are dark as well really dark and this is much darker More red. And then this is a very bright orange red. See what that looks like there. That's kind of close. Probably more red if we can swing it down. And then that would come in down here. If 
up here as well. And here also a little bit. Then this figure is very dark. Um, with some really bright reds kind of shining around here. And then you have some of these like shining through some of the column areas. Like this I think is too unsaturated so we might need to saturate it and move it like that. And we could probably move this down in value down here for the most part. Even that I would consider a pretty decent color comp because it gets us kind of there. It gets us a palette that we could refine. And that is not colors that I would that I would pick, right? They're just not something that I would think to use per se. Um, these are also really strange. These are from Ilya Repin. Or Repin, I don't know how to say it. Um, so this painting could could be up to like 150 years old. It's definitely more, more than 100. Um, and what's interesting is it looks very, very modern um, with these uh, red, red, green color scheme. So we have a complementary color scheme. So we go to this green, which is kind of a blue green, like around here in, in a lot of areas. So in the background, we have stuff like this, but it's lighter. And there's some down here too. And then we have red. That's also similar. Maybe in here a lot. And then it looks like there's some orange mixed in. Kind of a desaturated, a little muddy kind of. Especially over on the left. Then maybe there's some here too. This orange could also be like the effect of glazing uh, red and, and green over each other. But with your color comps, you can dab within here to pick your own colors, but don't dab the actual painting. Um, so this whole figure is fairly dark. So we could take I'd like a green and make it fairly dark. and begin to block in some figure shapes. And this would give us the ability to then work out the color for the figure. For the color comp assignment, you don't need to be like super accurate on the shapes. Just got to get close. So, and that's kind of what I'm doing here. Just like saying, well, let's just get close. And there's red. It actually weirdly, there's some weird levels of saturation and value in here. Um, which is why I picked this, because it's just such an odd thing. You've got stuff like this in the hat. And you've got some of this pea green, but a little darker in the hat, and even more saturated. But then you've also got like a dark saturated version of that green there. That's just funky, and there's some green in the hair. And then it looks like they've kind of glazed these over each other a couple of times. And there's some of that orange too. And in terms of the red, there's like a bright red here. Maybe like that. That flecks the nose just a little bit. And maybe hits some of the neck there. And then there's this bright red. It's kind of like a more of a red orange. It goes on the 
strip of the fabric here. And there's a, there's some some of this red orange darkish in the shirt here as well. But then it's all glazed over as again too, you know. And then there's this dark shadow here. And there's some super dark um, areas for the eye here. This is very dark and very saturated. So we're gonna push down into the very dark realm there. I think that's kind of like a good overdone modernization of that color palette, you know? Um, so we'd probably actually take that and make it even less saturated and lighter. Because there's green there, it's just not like that obvious. Glaze over a lot of this stuff with that, and it would still keep what's going on, but make it more subtle. That way, there's also a value contrast difference here. Like the hat's darker for sure. So we take that, dark it, darken it down. I didn't even put in the pipe here. I suppose I should do that. Just take this and bring it down. And then it has actually this, this sort of same red orange is on the pipe is here. Um, I could make it more orange probably. Just keep searching for what that looks like. Something like that. I think zooming out always gives us a good test of these color comps. So what I would like you to do as an assignment is do about 10 of these um, and not spending any more than, than five to 10 minutes on them. Um, these should be fairly quick. Uh, because the idea is not to copy a painting, it's to, it's to learn some stuff about color. And if you do one layer and just sort of push color around, work back to front, um, it'll go fairly fast. And uh, I don't want you to get bogged down in copying shapes either. So as long as you get close, you're good.